In the land of Arizona, through desert heat or snow, winds a trail for folks to follow, from Utah to Old Mexico. It's the Arizona Trail, a path through the great southwest, a diverse track through wood and stone, your spirit it will test. Some will push and pedal, and some will hike or run. Others will ride their horse or mule. What else could be more fun? Oh sure, you'll sweat and blister, you'll feel the miles each day. You'll shiver at the loneliness, your feet and seat will pay. But you'll see moonlight on the borderlands. You'll see stars on the Mogollon. You'll feel the warmth of winter sun and be thrilled straight through to bone. The aches and pains will fade away. You'll feel renewed and whole. You'll never be the same again with Arizona in your soul. Along the Arizona Trail, a reverence and peace you'll know through deserts, canyons, and mountains from Utah to Old Mexico. First gate of the Arizona Trail. This is my first time going on a long hike like this all by myself. All of my conditioning has been done with a partner or something just because it's more fun, more bearable. I'm really excited to see, you know, what my own pace is like and if I can actually knock out a full 17 miles all in one shot. Pretty hyped. Basically the same sort of terrain I was walking through yesterday and eventually I'm gonna gain some elevation and end in the tall ponderosa pines a bit closer to Jacob Lake. So I was just starting at the Winter Road Trailhead and now we're going on to the Orderville Trailhead. Which as I said, 17 miles that way. Let's get it done guys. Just saw something pretty cool going down the trail. You can notice, so here's the trail. And there's this darker soil just off the side. This is what's known as cryptobiotic soil. It's actually tiny microorganisms that grow in that surface of the soil. And they actually help to keep the water in the soil in this very arid environment. So you see much more grasses and wildflowers growing in areas that have that. The only issue, is if someone like me doing this trail were to go off trail a little bit and walk on it, it would take hundreds of years for that to completely regenerate to its, how it's supposed to be. So now I'm beginning to climb up the mountain. We're starting to get to some of the really big ponderosa pines and scrub oak. The junipers are fewer, but look at this like giant pine tree right here. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's indicative that I've gained a little bit of elevation. They kind of start just appearing at like 7,000 feet. So that tells me you know, I only have a few hundred more feet to go up, but it's cool. Just been walking through like high desert scrub rangeland all day. The moment I start going uphill, pine trees immediately. Just cool how quick it goes. Biology really has its stuff figured out and it knows what it needs. And apparently what these pine trees need is right here. You guys are gonna think I'm crazy for a second here, but bear with me. If you smell a ponderosa pine tree, it smells kind of like vanilla. It's a very, very sweet smell. Not at all like, you know, a pine essential oil where it smells like Christmas. It's very sweet, almost smells like a bakery. It's really cool. That's a really easy way to tell if it's a ponderosa or not. Oh, what a wonderful day so far. I've been hiking trail 101 all day today, which I find hilarious because it's my introduction to the trail. Might as well be easy to 101 right here. Only five more miles to go today. The longest day I've ever hiked. I think I've already hit the mark, I've gone about 12 miles and I think my previous longest distance was yesterday, but this has been completely alone. And between you and me, 
I'd say this is one of my most rewarding days of hiking so far. You know, you just get to learn how far you can push yourself and overcome with happiness when walking down these beautiful paths and seeing the world, seeing all the life around, you know? Just amazing. The world is alive. After you have an experience like this, there is nothing that can convince you otherwise. <sighs> On any of the national trails, it's sort of the culture to give yourself an alias to go by while on trail. Because in a way, it's kind of an experience separate from your life. It feels out of body, even though it isn't. So for this trail, I am uh, going by the name Frodo. He's one of my longtime heroes. I've always been a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. And uh, I got some Fro going right here. So Frodo. Good morning everyone. Today is the beginning of day four on the trail. Yesterday I killed around 12-ish miles. 37.2 miles to go to Grand Canyon. I'm over halfway through the Kaibab section of the trail. I'm really hyped about it. And yesterday I was hiking through a huge burn area clearing. I have about five more miles through that same clearing. And there are storms that are gonna be blowing in this afternoon, so I'm trying to get Another like 12 and a half miles done today before noon, before the storm gets real. If I don't make that time, it's okay. I have my rain gear and some warm equipment, but uh, rather not engage with that type two fun quite yet. <laughs> have made it through the burn area just about about to get back into the forest already gone about five miles today have about seven more to get to forest road 221 and from that point I only have oh 15 miles to the national park boundary something like that a little less than my math is probably off but there's the forest Here's a prime example of some of the water in the Arizona Trail. How pleasant. Must be a struggle to go down there and pump. I'm glad I'm carrying enough right now. How pretty. Ooh, hi turkey. That's a turkey hen and it's chick. Oh, here he comes. Wow. Good morning, friends. Today, I started off at Forest Road 221. And I've already covered about five and a half miles since then. Just met up with the parents up here and they're taking the big camera back to camp for me, bless their hearts. And I'm continuing on another six miles to the 610 trailhead, which is right next to the Grand Canyon National Park boundary. So I'm doing 12 miles today, 12 miles tomorrow, and then we go down to the canyon on Thursday. There's something about hiking in Alpine Meadows that is just, so unique and so perfect. Meadows just seem to pop up wherever I hike. I'm very grateful for that. The open spaces, man. 
Good morning, everybody. Today is my last day on the North Kaibab Plateau. I'm hiking to the North Kaibab Trailhead in Grand Canyon National Park, starting at the 610 Trailhead. Looks like I get to do some more forest walking in these beautiful, beautiful meadows. And in a couple of miles, I'm gonna be hitting the highest point on the Arizona Trail, which is the lookout tower for the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, which I don't think is in use anymore, but it's positioned on top of this awesome mountain. So I'll uh, let you guys know when I, when I get there so we can check it out together. Here's instructions for the Osborne Firefinder, which is this. See how it slides? There used to be like a big map on here with directions. You can see there are the uh, degrees on the bottom here. So what they would do, they'd take this little thing, then they'd spot the fire and point where it is. Then they'd know from their direction where the fire was. So with other fire lookout towers, they use those degrees to then triangulate. So they know, okay, it's 90 degrees from here, you know, 270 degrees from here, and 180 degrees from here. And then they can guess the distance where that is in relation to each of these towers. So it gives a more accurate reading of where stuff is. This is how they used to do it. And there's still a lot of places that use fire watch towers like this, but it's a dying art, sadly. I know I'd love to have a job like this, oh my god. Back on trail. Let's get it. Woo! Made it to the gatehouse. I think that means I've gone two and a half miles. About a quarter way through the day. Feeling good. Oh, almost lost the first aid kit. The bag came open without me noticing. Yeah, dad, I should have taken your advice and put the little pin on the zipper, I know. Thankfully, it was only like a third of a mile back. Hardly anything. Bless. <laughs> I was scared I was gonna have to do that whole hill again. Because this has all my prescription meds in it and that would've been so hard to try and refill at the Grand Canyon. Probably impossible. So, we're good. <laughs> the, al the geology is starting to look a little more Grand Canyon E. I think that's a good sign. I just found this in the middle of the trail. It's not close to any thing. I know that this is a insulator. These kind of go at like the top of uh, telephone wires and stuff like that, but I don't know how the heck it got here. I guess I'm carrying it out with me. For anyone who's looking for a really good backpacking snack that's both vegan and vegetarian, but high calorie, dried figs. They keep quite a while. They don't really smush smaller than this. They taste like fig newtons. Just, it has a little bit of seeds in it, but these are really good and they're calorie bombs. Would definitely recommend them. Some beautiful rock formation over there. I'm now a mile from the South Kaibab Trailhead, so I'm getting pretty close. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. It's been a lot of years since I've been down in the canyon, at least seven, I think. Six. Regardless, I'm really excited. 
One of the big things that's really standing out to me that I've never experienced before on trail is the community that's out here, you know? Everyone I've met on trail, you stop and have a little conversation with them and very courteous and you know, you share, oh, here's the last place I found in the water. Good luck to you. Hope you have safe travels. I just had two mountain bikers blaze right past me. And I <laughs> listen to music and I think, oh, what's that sound? And they're talking to me saying, hey, on your left. I'm like, oh, snap. I look back at them. And they're like, oh, so sorry to disturb you. I'm like, you're not disturbing me at all. Thank you for the warning. You have a great day. Everyone's just so polite. And you know that they're out here just appreciating it the same way you are, you know? Sharing that same energy, carrying that torch. And back at that East Rim view I was at earlier today, my halfway point, you can tell like there's a huge parking lot there, so there's really good access, but there's all sorts of initials carved into the trees all over there. So you can tell that the people who have access to that spot, they don't respect it, they don't care, they're not of the same breed of the people that are in this for the long haul. Just something very interesting. It's like they don't care, they don't have a relationship with it. But if you're one of those people, you know, I inquire you, try out a three day backpacking trip. It'll change you. It'll change what you think. It'll change what you see.